Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Question 2, 2014 um, on complex numbers. So Z1 is equal to 5 minus i, and Z2 is equal to 4 plus 3i where i squared is minus 1. Find z1 minus z2. Okay, so to do this, um, instead of z1, put in your 5 minus i. Take away, now be careful of signs, always when takeaway is in the middle, okay? So I would always put a bracket there, even before I look at what z2 is. And z2 is 4 plus 3i. So because this has two elements into it, that minus is going to change the sign of both of these parts, okay? So in other words, you have five minus i minus four minus um, three i, okay? And then real imaginary, real imaginary. So group the reals together. So five minus four is one. And then you have minus one i, minus 3i again will give you minus 4i, okay? So remember when you're subtracting on the negative scale, there's minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. If you're out here at minus one i, and you have to take three more from it, you're going out further. This is the minus direction. So that's why you end up at minus four. Okay. Part two, verify that the modulus of Z1 minus Z2 is equal to the modulus of Z2 minus Z1. Okay, let's give that one a go. So we have Z1 minus Z2, okay? So when you've got two terms, and we've had this last week, when you've got two terms inside the modulus brackets, you have to find an expression for that first and then get the modulus for it of it. So we know what Z1 minus Z2 is, we're just after finding it. So therefore the modulus of 1 minus 4, 4 I will, maybe let me write it down like this first, the modulus of Z1 minus Z2 is the modulus of 1 minus 4 I. Okay, and remember what modulus is. Um, if you have a complex number X plus Y I, okay, then the modulus of x plus yi is the square root of x squared plus y squared. That's the formula you use. So therefore, if I have to get the modulus of 1 minus 4i, that's effectively my, my x. This is effectively my y. So it's the square root of 1 squared plus minus 4 squared. Okay, put that into the calculator. This would be 16 plus 1, so it's going to be root 17. Okay, and we have to park him for now. That's root 17, um, the modulus. And what, what is the modulus? If I go 1 minus 4i, it's down here somewhere. The modulus is the distance out from the origin to that complex number. Okay, that's what the modulus is. That's what those two lines mean. Okay, so now I have to find z2, the modulus of z2 minus z1. Okay, now of course, I don't know what z2 minus z1 is because I wasn't asked to find it. So I have to work that out first. Okay, so z2 is four plus three i minus again, five minus i. Okay, so four plus three i minus five. Now we've minus minus this time to be a plus i. Okay, so when you're subtracting, it changes the signs of everything after it. So that's why he becomes now minus five and he becomes plus i. So again, just like before, I have real imaginary, real imaginary. So group the reals together. So four minus five is minus one plus three i plus i is plus four i. Okay, so now if I get the modulus of Z2 minus Z1, I'm getting the modulus of minus one plus four I. Okay, so it's the square root of minus one squared plus four squared. Put that into your calculator. You get 16 plus one is root 17. Okay, so therefore give them back their own language. Z1 minus Z2, the modulus of it 
is equal to the modulus of Z2 minus Z1 because both of them are equal to root 70. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Let's move on. Give a reason, <clears throat> excuse me, why Z minus W is equal to W, the modulus of W minus Z will always be true for any complex numbers Z and W. Okay, so why is the modulus of Z minus W equal to the modulus of W minus Z? Okay, but this is what we did here. So this was for a specific case, for example, this is my Z and this is my W, if we want to call it that one. We just verified that Z minus W was equal to W minus Z. Okay, why are they always the same? Okay, well, I would argue that they'll always be the same. The modulus of them will always be the same because they, they are involved with the same numbers. So in other words, they have the same digits in them, but in many cases, the signs change. Look at that. Okay. And when you square a number, whether it's positive or negative, you always get a positive. Okay, so that's why the modulus then will always be the same. So if, if we look at this case, the minus four squared was 16, but the four squared was always 16. When you square a number, regardless of whether it's positive or negative, it'll end up being positive once you square it, okay? So that's the kind of answer that you, you need to try and capture in this question. Okay. Um, so the numbers are the same, or the digits are the same, are the same in each of Z minus W and W minus Z. It's the signs that differ. Or of, okay, or, or of course, a fancier way of saying this is the absolute numbers of both are the same because absolute means that the sign doesn't matter. Okay, but the way I've written there is perfectly fine. And then I would say when you square a number, positive or negative, you get a positive number. So signs don't matter for modulus. It's it's the digits or the numbers that do. So the square root of a squared plus b squared will be the same or something to that effect. Um, you can always talk about um, if, if you're good at plotting, um, if you like things visually and you plotted them, okay, one minus four i would be down here someplace and minus one plus four i would be up here someplace, okay? Um, and, and if you drew these out from the origin, you can always talk about, let me put him in a different color. You can always talk, you can always use the image to help you explain, okay? So if you don't like words, um, you can always use an image, okay? And what you're doing with this image by plotting one minus four i and minus one plus four i is you're showing that basically they are the exact same distance out from the origin. OK, they're just in opposite quadrants. OK, or they're an image of each other or however you want to explain it using the picture. That is perfectly OK. That and a couple of words works just as good as the mini little paragraph I have here. So play to your strengths. If you're an image person, use an image. If your words, use your words. OK, part B then. Find a complex number Z3 such that Z1 equals uh, Z2 over Z3. Okay, give your answer in the form A plus BI. So this is, again, you'll be too surprised um, examining whether you know how to divide uh, complex numbers. Okay, now what I don't particularly like about this question is the way they've written. Okay, so they've told us that Z1 is equal to Z2 over Z3 and they've asked us to work out this Z3 one on the bottom. Okay, um, 
So we have to manipulate it first. Uh, so in other words, bring the Z3 up there. So you get Z3 times Z1 being equal to Z2. Okay, and then divide both sides by the Z1 so that you get Z3 on its own. Okay, so Z3 is Z2 over Z1, and that's how I find Z3, okay? It's Z2 divided by Z1. Now, if you could remember your sine cos tan bit, this comes up a bit when what you need is here. And remember I told you if what you need is here, then these two swap places, okay? So if you don't want to go through all the steps of maths, you have to remember that if what you need is here in this location, then these two can swap places. Okay, if you understand the steps that I did here, which is formula manipulation, then that is even better. Okay, so let's do it. So Z2, what was our Z2? Four plus three I divided by Z1, five minus I. So that's Z2 over Z1, okay? Right, and you'll know from our previous examples, we have to multiply, you're not allowed to divide by imaginary numbers. So we have to change the bottom to be a, a real number. We have to make the I parts cancel, okay? How do we do that? You multiply it by the conjugate of the bottom. So what does that mean? That means you change this sign here of just the imaginary part, not the real part, just the imaginary part. So instead of that minus one I that I have there, I'm multiplying by the plus I, okay? What I do to the bottom, I must also do to the top, okay? And five plus I over five plus I is the number one. Anything over itself is one, okay? This is also one, okay? So I'm just multiplying our original equation by one. So it feels like I'm changing it a lot, but the net effect is you're not. And then we need to multiply it out. So just like we always do, it'll be four by everything in the second bracket, go back for the plus three I by everything in the second bracket, and we'll do the same on the bottom. So four by everything in the second bracket, plus three I by everything in the second bracket, over five by everything in the second bracket, go back for the minus I by everything in the bracket. Okay, and then let's multiply it out. Four fives are 20, four by plus i is plus four i. The bracket has closed, so I'm done with the four, so I'm onto this bit now, three i by five. Five threes are 15 i plus three, and then i by i is i squared. All over on the bottom then, five fives, 25. Five by i is plus five i. Minus i by five is minus five i, okay? And this is what you need. This is the whole reason we do this complex conjugate business so that these two cancel, okay? If you don't get these the exact same, oh, but the sign being the opposite, you've done something wrong, okay? And then minus i by i is my last bit. Minus by plus is a minus i by i is i squared. So once you're that far, cancel them two and then sub in for your i squareds. Okay, I squared, they'll always say it at the start of the question, is minus one. So let's sub in for them. I'll have uh, 20, and I'm going to add these. Four and 15 is 19i plus three times minus one. I'm subbing in for my I squared. And on the bottom, I have 25 minus minus one. Okay, so what do I have on the top then? 20 plus 19i minus three, and on the bottom I have 25 plus one. So 20 minus three is 17 plus 19i. And it's tradition that you write the real part first and then the imaginary part, okay? Over 25 plus one is 26, okay? So they asked us then to write it as a plus bi, so let's break it out. All of this is over 26, so my real part is 17 over 26, and my imaginary part is 19i over 26. So 17 over 26 plus 19 over 26i. I'm looking at these two numbers to see, can I simplify them or write them in their simplest form? No, that's them. So that's your answer. If you are interested in technology or engineering, 
but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our level seven in electronic and computer engineering? This is a three year program that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress onto the level eight in electronics and self-driving technologies and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.